Hello fellow crafters, I'm Karen, and this is the third and final part of our men's 1920s costume accessory series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a pocket watch prop to go along with the cane and cigar. The materials and tools that you'll need to make the pocket watch are up on the screen. I can tell you right off the bat that the one thing that is most worth purchasing in all of this is the chain. It is not worth the effort to try and make a chain unless you are in the chain making business already. So I purchased a two foot length of chain at the hardware store and I will cut that down to length. Other than that you're going to need some clay to form the body of the watch, some wire to reinforce certain parts, and then some paint and plastic and varnish to do the finishing elements on it. This first step is going to be by far the most challenging of all of the steps for this project just because it's where we're going to form the clay into the shape of a pocket watch. And it's not a very complicated shape, but it, it's my first time making this out of clay, so it will be a bit of a challenge to figure out how to get it exactly the way I want it. Once you've worked your clay into a nice soft ball of clay, you want to squish it down a little bit, and I do recommend using a rolling pin because we're going to be making some circles to stack for this, and it's going to be a lot easier to work with a nice flat amount of clay. I've rolled this out to probably a little bit less than a quarter inch of thickness. It's not 100% consistent, it's more of a quarter inch on this side, a little bit smaller on this side. But um, from what I was researching in how pocket watches are made, the measurements that are standard are the what's called the watch movement, which is the mechanics of it. And that seems to be standardized at around an inch and three quarters. But the body that it fits in, that's where it gets stylized. So that can have a lot of variation in it. So I'm going to be aiming a little bit larger than the, the watch movement element. And... I'll probably aim for about a two and a quarter inch at the largest pocket watch. I think I might actually make it two inches in diameter. So I'm actually just going to use a regular old compass to do this. And what I'm going to do is stack three circular la layers concentrically. So it's going to be a, a smaller diameter piece and then a larger diameter piece in the middle, and then another smaller one on top. So it's going to make a bit of a sandwich, and then um, that'll provide sort of the thinner, thicker, thinner uh, design that you often see. In using the compass here, I'm aiming for more of placing an indent in the clay as opposed to actually writing on it with the pencil. So don't worry too much about that as long as you can see the circle to cut out, you're good. And then as I'm cutting this out, the one thing I would recommend is that you try to keep your knife really straight up and down. Um, you don't want to end up with an angled edge of the clay. I had that experience with um, the walls of my fairy garden bakery. So um, you want to make sure that that is as straight as possible. And then you just want to go ahead and make two smaller circles to go on either side. I'm going to make these a little bit thinner and um, a little bit narrower in diameter. Now that we have these three circles, we want to stack them concentrically with the largest one in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to put my compass holes in so that I don't have to deal with that. And since my circles aren't perfect, just try to find the orientation that looks the most natural there. I'm just going to give them a little bit of a squeeze. So it's definitely on the thicker side, so you can make it thinner if you would want it to be thinner. And all I'm going to do is sort of try to smooth this into a more rounded edge. I want there to be still a di bit of a distinct uh, larger center, but more rounded edges overall. So I'm just going to use my thumb for this. I 
since it still looks pretty distinctly like three layers, the last thing I'm going to try to do in the smoothing process is try to erase the middle layer there. Um, so I'm just going to have to be really careful um, and just make it basically try to look like there's no line in between the layers. To do this rounding out, there are three things you'll need to do. The first is to pull some of the clay from the larger ring and the two smaller rings into the crevice that's in between them, where each one meets the next. So I do this at an angle, meaning I'm not pulling perpendicular to the tangent of the circle. I'm pulling closer to maybe a 45 degree angle. This moves a decent amount of the clay into that area and makes it look more angled and less like two stacked cylinders. Then for the two outer circles, you'll want to make the edge of it a more shallow angle. So rather than the steeper edges of a cylinder, we want to cut that down with our finger by moving the clay around to a, a shallower angle. Then once we've significantly reduced that crack in between the layers, you'll want to use very, very small motions to smooth out the last little evidence that it's there. The top of the stopwatch has a post, which basically has a knob and then a loop. So we're going to be making this with the clay, but reinforcing a little bit with wire just because that loop is going to need to hold the chain. And we want it to be pretty sturdy. And while this clay is very sturdy once it's baked, it just removes the risk of it breaking. To keep the post itself from disconnecting from the body of the stopwatch, I'm also going to use just a small piece of wire that I can shove into the body and then have come up through the post so that I can be sure they will stay together. Unfortunately, I think I've made it too small, so I'm going to have to start over on that bit. So that's roughly the right idea, and it's actually able to pivot right now. I'm not sure if that's going to hurt me later or help me later. I mean, in real life, it would be able to turn so that you could adjust the knob, but I wasn't expecting it to be able to, so we'll see how that goes. I may need to add glue later. If this goes terribly wrong, but definitely on the right track now. So I'm just going to do a little bit more smoothing out of the edges and um, then put this into the body. So far so good. And the last detail I'm going to add here is a little bit of a crosshatch pattern around the knob, which is where your fingers would go. So this piece is now ready to be baked, but there is one more piece that has to be made, and that is that a pocket watch would often have a bar at the end of the chain, and that's to go through the buttonhole of the man's vest, or coat, I guess, um, and it would just hold the chain in place. So we need to make that little bar and I'm going to be using my my wider 16 gauge wire for the bar and then I need to make a little bit of a loop for the chain to connect to. So this piece is about an, it's an inch and five sixteenths, 
doesn't really matter exactly how long it is. We just want to do the same thing where we push it through the bar of clay. And these aren't supposed to be huge, so we may need to pull off a bit of the clay. And again, the wire is just there to reinforce so that it can take a little bit more pressure than just the clay would on its own. That bar needs to have some sort of loop in the center. This is going to be the trickiest part of this. Um, I think I'm going to just make a loop of wire and then wrap the clay around it and use the clay to attach it to the bar. That way, um, it's again reinforced. I think that's about as good as this is going to get. There's definitely a hole in there that you could get a chain link through. It is going to need, I'm just thinking ahead to my chain, my chain is not going to probably make it all the way around that loop, so I may have to um, use an additional piece of wire to connect it, but I'm going to cross that bridge later. So these two pieces, I think, can now be baked. I'm just debating whether there should be a little ridge to put the the face of the clock into. I think I'm going to try and really, really carefully put a bit of a bit more of a circle in the front face. I'm not sure how much of a difference I made there, but I did try to put a little sort of indented face there where the um, numbers and stuff will get painted. Okay, so it's time to bake, and this is fairly thick, so it's probably going to need 25 to 30 minutes in the oven. So I'm going to pop this in and uh, bake it, and we'll see how it goes. I baked the body of the pocket watch for about 30 minutes, and the little bar I took out at about 15. And I've also let them cool for another 15 minutes after that. This is still pretty warm, so you may want to let it cool for even longer than that. But I'm going to go ahead and on to the painting stage. There are only two parts to the painting. I need to paint the face of the clock, which will be a white background with black numbers and hands, and then the gold of the actual body and the bar. So I'm going to start with the face, and I need to figure out where the center is, roughly, so that I can use a compass to mark the watch face, and then I can paint the background and paint the gold. The gold and white took about three coats plus some touch-ups on the gold, and the last step of painting is to put on the black numerals and hands. And um, this, you just want to use the finest brush that you possibly can uh, and be really, really careful. And make sure you plan out in advance where each of the 12 numbers needs to be so that you don't end up too scrunched or too spaced out. The key in putting those numbers in is just to be really, really careful in controlling how much paint you have on the brush. I often, I use the plate, or palette, um, to work a lot of the paint out of the brush before I used it, and I also washed the paint off of the brush a couple of times in the middle of the process so that it never got big and clumpy and I could keep it very tiny and controlled. And I just realized that I forgot to put the hands on, so I'm going to have to do that next.
To give the watch a bit more of a finished look like it actually has a glass screen on there, I'm going to be cutting a piece of plastic, and this is just some packaging material that I had, um, so it's a, a like very clear, thin plastic, and I'm going to be using my compass to cut a circle out of it, and then using some E6000 glue to put it on the front of the watch, and I'm going to be cutting it so that it overlaps a little bit with the gold, and I'm going to paint a little bit of gold on the plastic so it looks like it's kind of sitting underneath the gold as opposed to sitting on top of it. And I would say that even though I use hot glue for most everything that I can, in this case I don't want to use that because it's going to be thicker, it's going to be harder to control, and it'll be more visible when it's dry. Since my compass is not going to write on my plastic, I'm going to actually mark it on a sticky note, cut out the circle from there, and then put it on the plastic and cut it out there. It's worth having some toothpicks around when you use glue like this so that you can control it easily and spread it around if you need to. So I recommend having those around and just be really careful with this glue. Too much glue is going to be a problem. Too little glue, you can add more. So I had just one disappointment in that process, which is that even though I used a toothpick to sort of smear the thicker bits of glue towards the edge, the outer edge, um, I do have some glue that got pushed inward, and it looks a little bit darker right now. Um, so I'm hoping it looks more clear when it dries, but even if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Lesson learned for next time. We're down to the final step, which is to add the chain. And I'm a little apprehensive about this step because I'm not 100% sure how well it's going to go connecting it to the pieces that I already have. But I do have some little metal rings, which are unfortunately not gold-colored um, because I didn't have any gold-colored ones. Maybe at some point I'll switch them out and replace them, but for now I have to use the silver ones. And um, the only thing that I've done so far was to mark out um, the length that I wanted to have, which was just compared to the, um, to my husband's vest, basically. So I'm going to cut the, um, cut the chain and then use these loops to attach to both ends. And there you have the completed stopwatch. It's not perfectly connected, but it does function. So, well, I mean, the watch doesn't function, but the chain functions to hold the two pieces together. So just remember, if you make this, that patience is going to be the key. Um, it's just a time-consuming, pun intended, process. So be patient as you're doing it, and it will turn out great. Thanks for supporting Tickled Fancy Crafting by watching this video. This content is available on YouTube and Rumble, so click the like or rumble button to let me know that you enjoyed the content, and subscribe to see new Tickled Fancy Crafting videos in your feed. If you'd like to be informed directly about the content, ring the notification bell on YouTube or adjust your notification settings on Rumble. Comment with crafts that you would like to see in the future, and remember, you can make this.